In order to create the fracture simulation, we first need to cash out this simple simulation. So in order to, to do that, we're going to use file cache. So we're going to save each one of those frames as separate geometry. So before you do that, make sure that all the settings is as you want them. So in the transform node, in points from volume, uh, also in the solver. So make sure, make sure you like how this simulation looks. Okay, so we drop down the file cache and you need to make sure uh, to connect it and put it at the uh, at the at the end of, at the very end of your network okay and let's open the settings so first of all we want to specify the start and end frame so right click delete channels so that we can type our own values here and i only want to cache 79 frames also i will copy this name from here so select that and control c to copy then Click on this option here, and you can see that by default, it should save it in my Geo folder. I create it, I will create a new folder here. Uh, actually, let's go back and I will save it in cache. Let's create a new folder, and this is going to be boxes01. Okay, so I'm inside cache and boxes01, and then I paste this name in here. And just give it a name. So boxes. Okay. And accept. Now I can save to disk. Great. And let's uh, go back to the object level. And I will hide this, uh, all of these networks and create a new one. So let's drop down the geometry node. And this is going to be boxes import. Go inside and let's create a file. And I want to link my file. Make sure you have show sequences, show sequences is one entry switched on so that you can import all of these frames at once. So click on that, accept. And now I can play my simulation, well, my animation. And you will see that it's much, much quicker. Okay, so now let's drop down transform node and null. So let's rename this null to out uh, fracture geo and also make sure to display it. L and H to layout at home. Now I go to the object level again and I will duplicate this geometry. So hold down alt and duplicate it. So the first input is going to be the fracture, uh, sorry, the first network. The second network is going to be the animation. So at the moment, they are exactly the same. So they overlap, you cannot even see them. But we're going to use the first network for our fracture simulation. So this one is going to be simulated and this one it's only going to show us the first bit of our of our animation because we want the simulation to start around here, around frame 63. So before that frame, we want to see, show the boxes import animation. After this frame, we want to show boxes import fracture. So let's select boxes import fracture and let's go to the RBD, where is it? Rigid body step. Okay, so it's this one here. And now we want to change this geometry to RBD glued object. So select it and click on RBD glued object. And now we will see that it's set up a network for us and it's also trying to simulate all these frames because my time cursor is on frame 63 so make sure you always do it on the first frame okay so now we have the boxes import now we also have autodop network let me hide boxes import animation now when i play it you can see that it just falls down 
Okay, because we don't have any ground, so it just falls down. So we also need to go to Collisions tab and create a ground plane. So we just click on ground plane and we'll create a ground plane. And now when I play it, okay, again, not much happens. We also lost our animation. We lost the um, boxes, boxes simulation. And we have to fix that inside the Autodot network. So let's go inside the, the Autodot network. Click L and H to lay out at home all. Zoom in. And we want to find RBD packed object. Okay. And in RBD packed object, we need to change the initial object type. So let's change this to create deforming active Object. So deforming means we have some keyframes, and so we have, or we have some animation. Active means that the gravity is affecting this object. Static will be just uh, in our scene. It can interact with other objects, but it will not be affected by forces. Okay. So create deforming active object. Now let's go back to the object level. Press play again. Okay. So you can see we have some animation and some strange things are happening here. So we want to make sure that our simulation starts after frame 61. And we can do that again in Autodoc Network. But this time, let's select the Autodoc Network and look at the settings here. And you can set up your start frame. And this is exactly what we want to change now. So let's change it to 61. Press Enter. And now when we play it, nothing is going to happen until frame 61. Okay, so, so the simulation starts at frame 61. But now you can see that on the impact, so in here, uh, the boxes do not really fall apart. And this is because in our Autodot network, we have this glue constraint node. And this is what makes all these boxes uh, stick together. So we need to decrease the strength. Let's decrease it to 10. And let's play the simulation again. Okay, so now you can see that the boxes are falling apart. And also some strange things are happening there. So we also want to increase the quality of our simulation. And we can do that in the rigid body solver in the number of sub-steps. So increase the sub-steps to 30. I found that this is the best for the simulation. And also in your RBD packed object, if you scroll down, you can see this physical tab. And this, will, this is where you can see uh, and change the physical properties of the boxes. So uh, I found that the best settings are uh, rotational stiffness 10, so that the boxes are less likely to spin. Then the bounce, I just decreased it to 0 0.05, and also friction 10. You can also increase friction on the ground plane, but you can see it's 1 by default. Maybe we can change. Let's leave it at 1. Okay, so now it's just a matter of adjusting those settings and see what works best for your simulation, because each simulation will be slightly different. Okay, great. So you can see that everything is falling apart. Brilliant. So now we need to make sure that we also see this animated character before frame 61. And this is why we need the second boxes import animation. Okay, but if we just leave it here, you will see that these two are different. So we need to make sure that this boxes import animation is hidden after frame 61. So let's select boxes import animation, go to the second tab called render, and we need to switch on display. And you can either keyframe display, so you can hold down Alt and click on the value and change it to zero on frame 61 and change it to one on frame 60. And again, hold down Alt and click on, um, on the value. Okay, 
Now when I play it, you can see we have up to frame 60, we have our boxes import animation. And after frame 60, we have the boxes import fracture. Or if you wanted to do it in a bit more elegant way, we can use a formula. So a formula is if dollar sign f, so if frame number is lower than 61, change the value to one. But in all other cases, keep the value at zero. Okay, and let's see if it worked. Yeah, brilliant. So it, it does exactly the same thing. So if frame number is lower than 61, then use the value of one. So under 61, we'll have value of one. If in any other case, uh, take value of zero. So use value of zero.